Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to provide you an introduction to Azure IoT Hub and its capabilities. Azure IoT Hub is a managed service hosted in the cloud, which is a central message hub for bi-directional communication between your IoT application and devices it manages. So Azure IoT Hub comes with lots of capabilities. Predominantly, you can divide them into three areas. First area is SDKs, second area is device communication, and the third one is device management. In SDKs area, you have two types of SDKs available with Azure IoT Hub. First one is device SDKs, using which you can develop applications and deploy them on devices. And second SDKs is service SDKs, using which your backend applications can interact with IoT Hub. Either you can develop applications from scratch using service SDKs, or you can enhance the existing applications in such a way they will interact with IoT Hub, okay? And with respect to device communication, you can do message routing, you can use device streams, and also you can able to carry out device to cloud communication and cloud to device communication, okay? And the next thing is device management area. In this area, there are a lot of capabilities in IoT Hub. One is device identities, which is basically an identity registry. And the second one is device swings. Third one is device configuration. And the fourth one is firmware updates. There are a lot of other capabilities also, but these are most important ones. So what I'm going to do is in this lecture, I'm going to take you through device management area in bit more detail. And in the subsequent lectures, I'm going to take you through device communication in a lot more detail, okay? So let me take you through device identities first. Identity registry is a REST capable collection of devices or module identity resources. Identity registry can store values for each device such as IDs, authentication keys, and status code. And using this identity registry, you can able to provision devices or modules that connect to your IoT Hub and also you can control per device per module access to your hub's device or module facing endpoints. So basically what will happen is when you register a device with IoT Hub, automatically an identity will get created for it. So using that identity, your device can be able to authenticate itself to Azure IoT Hub and send device to cloud communication or receive cloud to device communication. Okay, so basically whenever you register a device, an identity will get created with an ID and authentication keys, which you need to pass on to that particular device in order to interact with this IoT Hub and submit messages, okay? And one more thing is authentication keys, you can either auto-generate or you can provide manually also, okay? I'm going to show that to you in the next lab, how you can register the device and also provide your own authentication keys if required or auto generate authentication keys, okay? And the next most important thing is device twins. Device twins are JSON documents that store device state information, including metadata, configurations, and conditions. So for every device that is created in IoT Hub, a device identity will get created. And also IoT Hub maintains a device twin for each device that you connect to IoT Hub, okay? You can imagine device twin like a logical instance of your physical device in the field. And within this device twin JSON document, there are lots of sections. First section is tags, which you can use to store relevant information about the device. So the best example is you want to store location information of the device in tags. So for example, in what building the device is located, which floor, which section, which area, you can even go to meeting room, let's say. Like that, you can store device location related information in tags. However, this tag section is not visible to your device. Okay, your device neither able to see it nor fetch any information from tags. Keep that in mind. And the second section is properties. Under properties, you have subsections such as desired, reported, and read-only properties. So desired properties is the one that device is expecting from the backend IoT application. So for example, let's say you have temperature sensors and you want to change the frequency of temperature readings on an ad hoc basis. 
So in that case, you can put the frequency as a key value pair within the desired properties and using your backend IoT application, user can change the frequency and that frequency change will get updated into device twin and it will get notified to the device. Device will read that frequency change and start sending temperature telemetry at changed frequency. Okay. And the next thing is reported. Reported is something that device can read and write, but the backend application only can view it. So for example, device want to report its battery percentage because you want to identify all the devices with the battery percentage less than 10%. In that case, you want to trigger a work order to send a field user to replace the batteries in those devices. That particular data attribute you can put into reported. So basically device will write that battery percentage regularly into reported section of the device twin and your backend application will produce a report with all batteries less than 10% and rise a work order. Okay. And there is another section which is read only section. Basically you can't do anything with this read only section. It's basically there to store some information. For example, device ID, status and all those stuff. They will be used by IoT Hub in order to manage the devices. Okay. So this is all about device twin, but there is something else which is called module twin. Let me take you through that. Module twins represent modules on the device and IoT Hub can use to synchronize module conditions and configuration. Module identity and module twin provide the same capabilities as device twin and device identity, but at a finer granularity. So basically in terms of structure, module twin is exactly similar to device twin, but with one difference. Let me take an example to explain that. Let's say you have a multi-sensor. That multi-sensor will have a lot of capabilities. One is to take temperature reading, second one is light, third one is humidity, and the fourth one is motion sensor. All these things club put together within that multi-sensor. In order to represent that properly within IoT Hub, you can represent the multi-sensor as a device and each of those additional capabilities. So for example, temperature sensor, light sensor, humidity sensor, all part of that multi-sensor, but each one of these individual sensors you can represent as a modules on that particular device. So by doing that, you can able to independently control the frequency or any other things that you want to do on a module basis. Okay. That's the biggest advantage of having devices under devices having modules. Okay. And in terms of properties and JSON document, it is exactly similar to device twin. So I'm not going to go through it again. Okay. And finally, one more thing I would like to take you through, which is device configuration. Let's say you have thousands of sensors installed on that building. Okay. And one fine morning, you decided to change the frequency of the temperature sensors from daily basis to a hourly basis. Okay. You want to increase the frequency of the temperature readings that you are getting from these thousands of sensors. In that case, if you need to do using IoT Hub, either you need to develop your own application in order to programmatically update all device twins with the frequency change or go to each individual device twin and update it manually. In either way, it's extremely tedious task. To avoid that, you can take the advantage of automatic device configuration that is available in IoT Hub. Automatic device configurations work by updating set of device twins with the desired properties and reporting a summary based on device twin reported properties. So each configuration contains three parts. First of all, you need to decide to which sensors you want to apply that frequency change, let's say. Okay. So that means you are defining the scope of the device twins to be updated. That scope can be defined using target condition, which is basically a query on device twin tags and or reported properties. And the second thing is target content. What is the configuration? Either you want to inject into device twin desired properties or update the existing desired properties. Okay. So the target content is basically defines what a desired properties to be updated or added in the target device twins. And finally, you can able to define the summary counts of various configuration states such as success in progress and error. Okay. So this is a very useful functionality within IoT Hub. 
it can enable you to update thousands of devices by simply creating a configuration with a target condition, target content and IoT Hub will update all the device twins applicable with appropriate content. Okay, don't worry if you don't understand this. In the next lab, I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's it for this lecture. In this lecture, I have provided an introduction to IoT Hub and different components associated with IoT Hub and we gone in a bit more detail in the device management area that is device identities, device twins, module twins, automatic device configuration. Okay, next lecture is lab where I'm going to show you how to create an IoT Hub using Azure portal and also we are going to register a device, go through device twin properties and finally we will create a configuration and apply that configuration to the devices we create. Okay, so it's going to be an interesting lab. So if you have some time, join me in the next lab.